Welcome to Mind Flow Radio. We are creating conscious community by sharing mindful manifesting skills and transcendental music. We are all in this together. together. body is my vehicle. My soul is me. My body is my home. My soul is illuminating. My soul is indestructible. my vehicle, my soul is me. Mind Flow Radio. Mind Flow Radio. <clears throat> She's Jalen. And he's Monty. And here we are. The eternal present. Oh, indeed. <laughs> Beyond time. Yeah. On but, some level, there's no such thing as time. Isn't that kind of interesting? Yeah, the infinite now. Yeah. Beyond time. That's what I've been listening to Maharaj. Mm-hmm. He's talking about the three states of human development, the three stages. Okay. And the first stage is kind of like the ego stage where we just self-identify with our body, you know, and just live life that way. And the second stage is when we self-identify with our soul, essentially. So we develop a soulful perspective mm-hmm. on our life. And then the third stage is just this unification with the the infinite consciousness, hmm. which to me is kind of scary. Yeah, me too. You know, I'm ready. I'm ready for. I try and get into that second stage as much as possible, and that's what that song was about. Actually, mm-hmm. you know, my soul is me. My body is my vehicle. My soul is me. My body is my home. My soul is illuminating. My soul is indestructible. My soul is me. And that's something I say like multiple times every day. 
And the reason I do that is because I want that message to sift into my subconscious mind. Mm-hmm. And, and it's it does sometimes, <laughs> you know, but it's 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 a technique, you know, the mantra, repeating a message over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. Basically, that's what we're we're attempting to do is um change our programming. Because for myself, I've been programmed to feel like my body is me, right? You know, and. And I, I'm trying to unlearn that. At least I, I want to be in stage two some of the time mm-hmm. is my goal every day. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when I am in stage two, everything lightens up quite a bit. You start looking at your problems. It's like, oh, wait a minute. A hundred years goes by like a flash of lightning. You know, I'm a spiritual being having a temporary human experience. Mm-hmm. It's not that big of a deal, you know, or I, <laughs> yeah, I'm just totally. able to lighten up and deal with it, whatever it is, whatever challenge is occurring more effectively, if I can touch on that soulful place of awareness. Mm-hmm. So the teacher that you've been getting into is Nasara Gatata Maharaj. Yeah, I think Maharaj is his first name, or I don't know. No, no? Okay. that's the last name. Yeah, he's a, he's a great, great teacher. Um, yeah, he died in the 80s? Yeah, he, he yeah, well, he passed on, or he right. went to the spirit realm, but... Um, so the the things that you've been hearing are are other people reading his yeah. transcripts or something like yeah, that? Yeah, or his lectures. Mm-hmm. They re, 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 um, recorded his lectures. Mm-hmm. and That's cool. Just super phenomenal stuff. I mean, one of the... One of the aspects of his lecture that I'm really honing in on is he says that if we're able to find a stillness in our minds, Mm -hmm. which is something I've been teaching from a psychological perspective, you know, finding moments of stillness is really important for our psychological wellness. Mm -hmm. You know, that's kind of my angle as a psychotherapist, you know, but what he's saying is if we find these moments of stillness in our minds, that that in itself unleashes forces that create um, miracles in our lives. Mm -hmm. So in other words, for me, instead of trying to manipulate everything and do, do make all the right moves and think all the right thoughts and blah, 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 blah. It's like, no, I just need to find stillness and then it's done for me. I like that By idea. By the spirit realm, yeah, heck yeah. I definitely haven't uh, tried it. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's been working. I want to say that I try. It's been working yeah. well for me. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, oh, another thing worked out. Oh, whoa. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. I Yeah, and the synchronicities, following the synchronicities, that's so telling of if you're on the path or not. Yeah, one of the things that yeah, I want to right. share on the subject of ego versus soulful awareness is mm-hmm. um, I've been going through a little bit of a rough time, and it's been an interesting year. And I had a dear friend reach out to me and send me this podcast about Sisyphus, the myth of Sisyphus. And I've mm-hmm. heard it before because my my boys went to Youth Initiative, and that was one of the the myths that they discussed there. So I had heard it, but at that time yeah. I was still pretty busy in my mind, so I didn't really absorb it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and this podcast, which was called the Wisdom of Happiness podcast, mm. and the the myth of Sisyphus was the episode, and it really blew my mind open this idea of Sisyphus loving life so much that he cheated Hades a couple times and then the gods punished him with eternity of rolling a rock up a hill and how he came to terms with it and I was sitting with that and thinking about you know the the wisdom of happiness and this word happiness what is happiness and really stumbling around with it like not really being able to equate his acceptance with happiness. And then it dawned on me that it was a soulful awareness. It's the acceptance 
of the divine will. Hmm. And that, like, it was like an arrow into my heart or my gut, really. And I just kind of woke up in that moment and said, oh my gosh, I just got to roll the rock up the hill. I just got to accept that I am in the divine will. And no, I don't like it. And this is not what, quote unquote, I would choose for me. But it is what it is. And that soulful awareness is going to help me get through it. So I've been doing my best to, you know, the whole, basically the whole house has been talking about ego and soulful awareness. And so we decided to talk about it today on our, on our, on our, this month's podcast, because yeah. it seems to be where we're at and very possibly where our community is out at too. So, yeah. It's just, it's, it's such a key for, for myself to just get into that place of contentedness, mm. you know, which is, I think, the Sisyphus thing for me is like you, you take your role, whatever, whatever it is, and you just do it. Mm-hmm. And it's sort of like, well, like the human body only lasts so long anyway. Mm-hmm. I mean, we just, it, 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 we each have our dharma. Yeah. You know, and it's not always, like you said, it's not always exactly the way we want it, the way our egos want it. No. Right. Uh, and if we if we get into that scene of, no, it's not what I want, no, and then, then it turns in, our mind kind of can turn whiny, mm-hmm. and our mind can turn angry, and just, you know, throwing temper tantrums and... Mm-hmm. Turning into a bully, victim stancing, victim stancing, bullyhood. Happening to me. Yeah, I didn't I'm, do anything to deserve this. I'm gonna bully that my way deserved. into like changing my reality. You know, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, it's just it's it's much more chill to to look at life through a soulful perspective. You know, and another aspect of the soulful perspective is for me, I had this like. I had a very profound meditative moment maybe uh, 10 years ago where I had this visualization of this blue-white streak of light kind of right by my solar plexus, and I visualized that as my soul. Mm. And it was was really profound. My mind was deeply still when when I had this vision. And then um, for days afterwards, I felt better. Mm. You know, and I was really struggling then you know, with finances and breakups and everything, you know, everything was kind of topsy-turvy in my life, you know, trying to buy enough food to eat, that kind of stuff. Mm. And, um, but then once I, I, I had that vision of my soul, everything calmed down in my mind. Mm-hmm. It was like, oh, this is going to be okay. And now what I try and do is when I'm walking around, town or in the store, I try and visualize everybody's soul. You know, everybody, everybody. It's like we all have that spark of the divine within us, I believe. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and if I'm able to see that, then guess what? I It, I, it cures my um, desire to judge people. Mm-hmm. It, and it helps me see that everybody, everybody is miraculous. In a way, everybody, I'm talking everybody on earth walking down the street, some drug addict. It's like, well, I see his, if I can see his soul within all, like, wow, he's a miracle. Hmm. You know, he's, he's amazing. He's a divine being, even though he may be really struggling mm-hmm. right now. And I may not want to hang out with him, <laughs> you know, because he may want to rob me or something. I don't know or not, but just knowing that all of us are have this spark of the the divine within us really it's it allows me to just let go of prejudice let go of blame let go of hatred mm-hmm. you know and just like gives me the energy to just roll that rock up the hill mm-hmm. you know and just be cool with it and it's like oh i got to do stuff yeah. I got to I got to do stuff within my that's on my path, you know, and Yeah. Yeah, um thanks for bringing it back to there cuz I I remembered a piece that 
really helped me feel peaceful in that I get to die. You know, like I don't have to do this for eternity. No, that's this right. is not going to continue going. I'm mortal. I have yeah. a time limit. Yeah, this body will pass. My soul will go on. Yeah, and that brought me such peace. Oh yeah, and not in a suicidal ideation way, but more just like, oh, I'm mortal. Oh, thank goodness. Well, you, in one way, to, one way to think about that, if if it is true that we have souls and we start getting in touch with them, what we're doing is we're getting in touch with reality, mm-hmm. and we're we're connecting more fully with truth, with the vibration of the cosmos, mm-hmm. all that. And of course, we're going to feel better. Mm-hmm. Of course, we're going to feel better because we're we're connecting more instead of fighting against reality and pretending we know the truth and that very narrow e- egoistic perspective of i know everything and right you know or i know so much and those people don't and those people are stupid and i'm so smart you know all that mm-hmm. goes away yeah and i think on the ego side we we could develop that a little bit better too and uh, there's the positive and the negative ego. There's the ego of I'm such a piece of, you yeah, know, and yeah. I I am horrible. No yeah. one should like me. I hate me. Yeah. And on and on it goes, you know, that's yeah. just a small sample. And then there's the positive ego, which yeah. is what you're saying. Like, I'm better than they are. I'm so, I'm so much yeah. smarter. I am so much wiser. The way I live is just so much better than all those other people. And Yeah, my thoughts are so superior to theirs. And Yeah, so, and that, well, the then there's the, the ego in its place, right? That, yeah. and go ahead and explain that. Oh, yeah, I think the, the middle ego, manager yeah, the ego is yeah, designed to be the middle manager of our lives. Super important, mm-hmm. you know, it, the ego can, oh, time to pay the bills, time to, you know, it needs these chores. That's my do. ego. <laughs> yeah, but the problem is when we give the ego the reins to our entire lives right? and say, okay, you're the CEO of my life ego, Mm-hmm. Tell me what to do. Mm-hmm. And then the ego's like, oh, okay. And then the ego wants to hold on to that power. And just, yeah. it's really interesting. I mean, it's v- super prevalent in this culture and people are exploited because of it. Mm-hmm. You know, be fearful, be, be angry. You have to look like this to be oh, yeah. liked. You need to drive a car like that if you want to find a woman or whatever. You have to eat these foods to have fun in life. Yeah, you got to wear these clothes and have that purse. Mm-hmm. And whatever it is, it just goes on and on. It does go on and on. <laughs> it does go on and on. And but yeah, to transcend that, what we're talking about is a transcendental mind state when we can transcend, at least for moments, the ego, and that's where the stillness comes in. Because mm-hmm. when my mind is com- completely still, mm-hmm. then I'm not being driven by my ego. I'm in more of a place of soulful awareness. So are you saying that to have soulful awareness, you have to be in stillness? Um, no. Okay. No, but stillness definitely helps. If we, if, we, if we don't get to that place of stillness, if we're constantly just thinking, mm-hmm. and it could be the most positive thought in the world, but if we're constantly <laughs> thinking, 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 the mind's going to get agitated. I'm going to manifest this thing. It's going to be so great. It's yeah, going to be so good. Yeah. I can't wait. I wonder when it'll happen. And it could be tomorrow. It could be right now. It could be in 10 years. Yeah, what do I right. have to do to get there in 10 years? Yeah. I don't know. No, no, no. No, yeah, no, no. Yeah, right. It just keeps going. And our minds are not designed to be computers. I mean, and we, we have this tendency to overdose on screen time and our mental diet. We're not choosy with our mental diet. We indulge in way too much mental junk food, mm-hmm. which, I, you know, I include the news as mental junk food. And mm-hmm. And well, the bottom line is, yeah, we could have the most positive thoughts in the world, but if we're thinking too much, our mind's going to get agitated and slip into anxiety and depression. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's not a soulful perspective. Right. A soulful perspective is, is, you know, having, if we are thinking the thoughts are, are sharp and clear and not constant <laughs> you know there's mm-hmm. moments of silence in between the thoughts mm-hmm. you know and i think of uh, einstein and you know he he would analyze like theories and i, I would i would argue that 
you know, he, he had a lot of soulful perspective happening because his mind was so clear. And then between analyzing the theories, he would take breaks and play the violin mm-hmm. to find because that silenced his chattering mind. And so his mind was very in balance mm-hmm. and therefore very effective. And we can do that for ourselves as well. We can notice that if our minds are out of balance, if we're thinking too much, that our our we're, our thinking reaches a point of just not being effective. Mm-hmm. And then we get frustrated, and then we get angry, and then we get irritated. I get like really irritated if my mind is thinking too much. And just as a side note, one big problem we have in our culture is people self-identify with their thoughts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the idea is if we're going to really take control of our thoughts, we need to use the metacognition, or we need to use metacognition, which means watching our thoughts from a mindful perspective. So as we observe our thoughts, we notice old patterns of thinking, and then we can like label them. We can look at our thoughts from a scientific perspective, discerning perspective, and such as I could have a very negative thought, and I would notice it, I would label it, oh, that old thinking pattern. And at that point, I'm separating myself from my thought. So my thought is no longer me. Mm -hmm. And from that perspective, I'm able to re-steer that thought or let it go. Mm -hmm. But if I self-identify with my thinking, then I don't feel like I can change it because it's me, if that makes sense. Right. Yeah. I think that's pretty important in in moving towards a soulful awareness is being able to (laughs) feel who's speaking. And I guess that's one of the questions that I wanted to explore is how to go from the ego or or ego voice into the soulful voice. And for me, I have this pattern where I'll you know, I'll get up and I'll do my qigong and I'll do my meditation. I'll feel pretty good, but I have these irritants and my my I don't know if you'd call them blinders or my guidelines of annoyances or something like that. Where it's like, okay, I have to get through my day past these etched in irritants. And I don't make it very far <laughs> mm-hmm. into my day. Yeah. But I'm still able to shift back into the soulful awareness, but it may be with some personal judgment because, oh, look, I fell out again. Go figure. I'm not good at this yet. Or mm-hmm. even my voice would not even say yet. It would just say, I'm not good at this. And. Mm-hmm. That, that negative ego just is like, oh, here's my chance, and hops in and takes me by the throat. And mm. it's really intense. Mm. And then I'll, you know, move on and do my best to go back into the soulful awareness through another meditation or yeah. or leading somebody in some mindful movement. And then, okay, I'm back. I'm okay. And then I get on the road. and. Mm-hmm. Why is that car pulling in front of me? They're going too slow. What were they thinking? Da 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 da. Yeah. You know, which the road rage has actually gotten a lot better over the last many months. That's good. But, you know, it's still, it doesn't rage me anymore, but it, I get irritated. Yeah. And, and then, you know, it's just like that's the pattern of the day. So I'm yeah. there, I'm peaceful, oh, this is great, yeah. and I'm annoyed. Yeah. And then, okay, I'm back. I'm okay. Yeah. And then I'm annoyed. Yeah. And it just goes back and forth like that. And I know that's somewhat normal. Yeah, it is. But it is also a challenging state to be in to know, yeah. oh, look, I can get there. Oh, and I can fall out. <laughs> you yeah, know, and I know sure. that's probably where most people yeah. reside but with these practices, mm-hmm. just by being aware of it, like you, you are, that that's a big step in the right direction. Mm-hmm. You know, and I would suggest looking at it from an, just an energetic perspective. You know, what what is the energy of my mind like right now? And that could be called meta awareness, mm-hmm. or no, or noticing when we get stuck in 
like thinking distortions from, you know, cognitive behavioral therapy. If my mind gets stuck in like black and white thinking, that's like a sure sign that I'm going to be in the ego state. Or if Mm -hmm. my mind is stuck in, you know, catastrophizing, Mm -hmm. that's another ego state. And just by noticing and labeling our thought, our own thinking, we're doing therapy on ourselves at that point. Yeah. And, and, um, it's not easy. I mean, in Hermetics, in the Kabbalion, the Bible of Hermetics, it talks about how there's essentially two basic mind states. The elevated mind state where we're feeling inspired, content, loving, forgiving, just still, clear-minded. And then there's the lower mind state when we're, you know, irritated and judgmental and blaming others and pointing fingers and hateful and angry and depressed, Mm -hmm. you know, but just using our meta meta awareness and noticing what mind state we're in is a big step in the right direction because then we label it and then it has less control over us. Because for a lot of us, I mean, myself included, when I get stuck in that lower mind state, if I don't notice it, I can really stay stuck there for quite a while. My mind can be like ranting can't believe this is how I can't believe that person did that to me. And that's so uncool. And what am I going to do next time? And blah, 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 blah. You know, it just keeps going and going and going. And some analysis is good, but over analysis is never a positive thing, psychologically speaking, and it'll keep us stuck. Mm -hmm. So just being aware of, and according to Hermetics, the Kabbalion, we naturally go in between the, the elevated and the lower mind collectives. Mm-hmm. And we kind of cycle in and out. But the idea with hermetics is you want to notice when you're in that elevated state and neutralize, which means you stay there for as long as possible. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, just spend try and spend more time in the elevated mind collective than in the lower mind collective. And it's tricky in this culture because so many of us are stuck in that lower mind state, I think. Yeah. You know, and that, that's what, to me, for me... It's a sure thing if I if I like scroll on Facebook for half an hour, I'm going to be in that lower mind state. If I look at the news for half an hour, I'm going to be in that lower mind state. It's almost like guaranteed. Mm-hmm. So, or like two minutes. Yeah, you, yeah, you don't know because mm-hmm. there can be like things that just trigger you, grab your mind. Mm-hmm. Oh no, I'm doomed. We're doomed. Oh We're, no. Yes, right. How do I get ready? Yeah, right. Who do yeah. I hate? You know mm-hmm. and. Mm-hmm. In reality, if we're going to save ourselves, it's going to be through supporting positive solutions anyway. Mm-hmm. I mean, and that gets back to Buddha's Lotus Sutra in that, you know, support the good if you want to create positive things. Support it. It's like your energy, your energy, your attention, you're like pouring your attention into something positive, it helps it grow. And if you're pouring your attention, and you want to think of your attention as actual strings of energy flowing from your consciousness. If I'm pouring my strings of energy into something negative, Mm -hmm. then I help that grow. I mean, so we need to like take responsibility for our minds and really work on manifesting positive things, because that's one, one of the bottom lines is we're vastly more powerful than we understand. Mm-hmm. Vastly more powerful. Yeah. we got to be very mindful with our thoughts. We do, and so, not beat ourselves up when we're off the path, too, because that happens all the time. Mm-hmm. So I'm wondering if you could share a little bit about how you created this chant, because we're oh going to actually do my version of it okay. next. So if you just want to introduce how it came to you and... Yeah, I um, I came up with that chant probably 30 years ago, mm-hmm. and it's, 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 a, it's a segment of a longer chant. Yeah, you should do it. Okay, this is the whole chant. <clears throat> my soul is me, my body is my vehicle, my soul is me, my body is my home, my soul is... Illuminating, my soul is indestructible, my soul is me. I am part of everything and everything is a part of me and to fully realize this is to be awake. 
Words can only point to the direction, true knowledge can only be attained through awareness, quietude, stillness, oneness. So that's the entire chapter. Well, I right know there. there is more to yeah, it. Yeah, there is. <laughs> there is. And I, I don't know. I, I used to say that the entire thing, just I would repeat it in my mind all, over mm-hmm. and over. And wow. It was funny, too. Just a little funny side note. I used to work at a this um, group home, this temporary group home for like boys who were criminals, you know. Mm-hmm. So it was a rough scene. And I remember this as, as a pun, because I would have to come up with punishments. One of the punishments <laughs> was I would make somebody like... R- transcribe that chant <laughs> <laughs> like like three times or something so you're like writing it <laughs> that's hilarious yeah that's like that's like old school old school that you know then they would do that and you know they would have somebody transcribe a chant over and over mm-hmm. as, a, as a spiritual practice mm-hmm. so anyway and yeah the the chant throughout the years has brought me a lot of peace and i'm really i'm really um Re- revitalizing it right now in my mm-hmm. life. Yeah. Yeah. So you've been <clears throat> playing your original version. And when we got together, you weren't playing that at the time, but you did share the chant with me. So then I yeah. created a version. Yeah, so awesome. we're going to share that with you next. And then we'll cool. conclude, give you some skills on soulful awareness. Yes. Enjoy. My 
Shiva into that chant is a super welcoming way to remember that we're mortal mm. too. Because that's what she was about. She was says, "Okay, your time's up." Hmm. So you don't want to mess with Shiva. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Shiva. I hope you on our, you're on our side. Of course. <laughs> I mean, it's That's on good. the side of the universe, so. Yeah, all right. Yeah, so that was Soul is Me slash Om Namah Shivaya, mm-hmm. written many years ago now. Yeah, one thing I was thinking about when I was drumming to it right now, and, you know, just the Soul is Me aspect and how running into Ram Das years ago really, really shifted my thinking. And this is probably 18, 19 years ago. And he, he came to this meditation, this Christian meditation retreat center that I was living at. 
to to give a speech and to have a kirtan. That was my first kirtan nice. of all time. Was with Ram Das and his friends, mm-hmm. you know. And um, anyway, I, I was kind of in the hallway of this center, and here comes Ram Das, and he's in a wheelchair because he he had had a stroke, mm-hmm. and he came in and he's getting rolled into this into this building. And he was blissful. I was like, whoa, this guy has some secret. Mm -hmm. Because his body is wrecked. Mm -hmm. I mean, not completely wrecked, but pretty in rough shape. Mm -hmm. And he obviously didn't identify with his body because his mind was in a blissful state. I was like, whoa, what's, what's happening here? And then later on, I listened to his lecture and he was talking about Again, the three stages of development. Mm. And he said he he said his teacher was in the third stage, but he feels like he's in the second stage, that soulful awareness stage. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh man, I want to get there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so Ram Das was it was a great example of that to me. And he he explained it so clearly and just concisely. And and it's not like mysterious or foo-foo. It's just the way it is. You know, the three basic stages of human development. And, you know, it's, it's it's pretty obvious that the more people that enter into stage two, the more peaceful our world will become. Mm -hmm. The more we'll share with each other, less hate, more love, Mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it all begins in our minds, Mm -hmm. really. And just yeah and i doubt many humans make it to the third stage but well, maybe that'll change in 100 years <laughs> yeah i think so <laughs> i think so i mean and it's the way um i love this eckhart eckhart Tolle, the way he talks about it is you know imagine like somebody becoming enlightened like the third third stage is probably enlightenment mm-hmm. and he said you want to imagine that's a flower And on earth, there was the first flower that emerged, Mm -hmm. one flower, and then many more sprung up, you know, and he kind of, well, he was saying that it it will happen, Mm -hmm. you know, we just have to deal with where we're at in our development. Yeah, yeah. And and be at peace with that. What just flashed in my mind is uh, a teacher... Sri Yukateshwar, who was yoga, uh, Parahamsa Yogananda's teacher. Yeah. And he was fairly enlightened and was also a householder. Mm-hmm. And a householder meaning he had a wife and had done the working thing and all of that mm-hmm. and w- then was called to be a teacher and a leader, a spiritual leader. And he said, I can't, I'm a householder. And and the story goes, Babaji said, yes, you can. And that's what you're here to do. And so he did and turned his house into a, like a monastery style type dealio, except his wife was there. And, yeah. um, but anyway, he wrote a book and it's about the, the mysteries of the, yugas and the, mm. the the vedas and i haven't gotten all the way through it yet but i can tell you mm-hmm. that it is on youtube and you can search it and it's an audiobook at this time and it was so enlightening to me not that it enlightened me but you know, it enlightened my mind for a moment Mm -hmm. when he was talking about the yugas because there's been all of this talk on the, we're in the Kali Yuga or no, we're in the, I can't even, Surya Yuga and no, we're in the, you know, I don't remember all of the yugas So yugas are like periods of time. Yes. And the Kali Yuga is the darkest time. Yeah. And so then, you know, people have been arguing ever since I learned anything about yoga people i've been hearing the debate on where are we at in our human evolution of the mind and he says that we have passed through the kali yuga and the kali yuga was actually at the time of the uh mm, the the dark ages the 
Okay. What, you know, the yeah. Black Plague and all of that. And that was yeah. like the darkest time since caveman of mm -hmm. the mind yeah. and being close to God. And that we're now we're moving close, we're moving up. Okay. So yeah. in a few thousand years, we'll be mostly, most humans would just naturally be enlightened because we're up in that deep connection mm -hmm. with the one. And yeah. so if I have any more lives to do, I hope I come back then. <laughs> that would be nice. Yeah, right. Like, ah, oh, this is nice. Yeah. But yeah, that's uh, my my buddy, our our friend Akshay. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Akshay. He always says, "Man, I, I want to be here five hundred years from now." Yeah, and we'll all be beige. He says, <laughs> <laughs> "All humans, we'll just be so mixed together, we'll all be beige." <laughs> yeah, and Love we'll that. all just be meditating together every morning and night and. Just Before mean, dinner and... And being kind to each other. Yeah. And kindness that. is such a huge part of the soulful awareness. Oh, yeah. I feel like... It's natural. The... That... What's important, though, yeah. is that there's kindness to self and kindness to others. Oh, yeah. And it seems to me that most people I know are either one or the other. Like, they're really kind to themselves and maybe standoffish to others. Or they're really kind to others... And then beating themselves up on the side. Hmm. That's been my observation. Yeah. Um, working with people and myself and talking with friends. And it's like to, to take all of that and add it together brings yeah. soulful awareness. To be kind to yourself and kind to others. Yeah. Well, in being kind, I mean, from a mindful perspective, it can be seen as just being discerning rather than judgmental. Mm -hmm. You know, be, and that, that applies to ourselves and others. You know, when I make a mistake, if I beat myself up. Right, right. I mean, which is is my habit, essentially. But, yeah, I mean, getting over that, you know, I am making progress on that. I am a little bit. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Trying to. Well, that's all we can do is make progress because we have these mm -hmm. old mind patterns that have been passed down. Yeah. From our ancestors, essentially, you know, 8,000 8, generations of people suffering. You can even just imagine the immense trauma that's gone on with all your ancestors over 8,000 generations. Right. It's just like mind-blowing amounts of trauma and just craziness. And, mm -hmm. and now we, we need to, like, be able to let go of that on some level and start a new chapter for humanity. Mm -hmm. And by just working on ourselves. Yeah. And and I, I have to bring up one of my favorite teachers these days, Dr. Joe Dispenza, who says that science is the new spirituality, neuroscience and quantum physics. And he is all about rewiring the brain and how much effort it takes to become a conscious of these old patterns that you're talking about that yeah. have been passed on and, and embedded in our DNA. Yeah. And, right. and his way is basically meditation and specific types of meditation to get yourself into the void, which is also the Qigong that I do is all about yeah. getting into the void and getting into the place of stillness, not really here, not really not here, <laughs> you know, in that in-between yeah. place of peace and contentedness. And, um... I, I definitely suggest listening to him. I, I know that some people don't like his approach, yeah. but I love how he simplifies and explains things. So another yeah. person to check out. And oh, the other thing that I wanted to say is that there's all of these musicians and music is another really huge way to uh, steer your awareness, if you're listening to things that are giving you positive messages and um, uplifting you and making you feel happy or happy might be too strong, but inspired. content, inspired, yeah. peaceful, mm -hmm. that that can help you with a soulful awareness. Whereas if you're listening to something that's yeah. someone's processed through their depression or through their anger, 
Yeah. You know, and there's a lot of songs like that or breakups yeah. or on and on it goes. That could help temporarily yeah. with what, an emotion that you're going through, but yeah. really paying attention to the words that you are listening to and oh yeah, and choosing the ones that uplift you. Absolutely. Being, being choosy with our mental diet is really crucial in this world, in our culture, mm-hmm. when it comes to evolving our mind state. Mm-hmm. If we're not choosy with our mental diet, we'll just overdose mm-hmm. on mental junk food because that's completely culturally acceptable <laughs> right. in this culture. You know, you go to a gym and it's just completely, if you go to a gym and the TVs are off and you're working out and then somebody comes in, it's culturally acceptable for them to just turn all the TVs on, <laughs> you know? That's totally cool, you know, in in our culture. But just imagine if you go into a gym and you turn all the TVs off Mm -hmm. and there's other people in there that they might, um, I don't know. It's so good (laughs) just by being choosy with our mental diet, though. That's that's really a big deal. And be choosy with our self-talk. Let's face it. I mean, let's really look at that. And that's where the metacognition, noticing your Mm self-talk. Noticing what's going on and purposefully in interjecting positive things, taking control of the self-talk. And for me, I, I purposefully at times say, I say things like, you got this, brother. Mm-hmm. I'm talking to myself. Yeah, man, you got this. You know, and just like interjecting that into my mind because I want to be in charge of what's going on. Right. And I don't want to steer old, the ship. Well, it's a, it's a question of freedom. Mm-hmm. Because if if I don't take charge of my patterns of thinking, the old patterns just control me. And then I'm stuck. And then I'm stagnant. Mm -hmm. But if I can notice, you know, some unproductive patterns of thought happening and I reboot it or re-steer it or just start saying thank you in my mind to quiet that chatter down, then I am doing myself a great favor. Mm -hmm. And I'm working on reprogramming my subconscious yeah. to boot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, another skill or direction that a person can go in to seek soulful awareness, in my opinion, is getting to know your chart, your astrology chart. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been huge in my own healing and understanding. And some people don't like astrology because um, there is an ego perspective that you can take. Uh, you know, a person can say, oh, I am i don't have any earth in my chart, so I'm really ungrounded and that's that. But that's not the message that the original astrologers or quote unquote mathematicians of really long time ago used to say. And it was that you can understand your chart so that you know how to navigate you know what is being triggered in this life what is activated what is loud and how to navigate it so it's meant to be a path through it's meant to be a a way of showing you how you can outgrow the karmic imprint that you're born into Mm. so that's a really great way of if you utilize that tool of becoming soulful in your awareness of these, these are my challenges, and I'm going to do my best yeah. in these ways to counteract those challenges. Yeah, and also these are my strengths. Right, totally. And, and just working with that is helpful. Mm-hmm. And some people don't need their chart to figure that out, and no. other people really do. Like I'm one of the people that if you've if you've been completely removed from your natural state of being from childhood on it's almost imperative to learn about your chart so it helps you find center again Mm. and find your natural state of being so it's it's definitely for people on the healing path that are are attempting to uh, become free become Mm. free in their body their mind and connected with their soul it is a question of freedom I mean, Mm -hmm. just even finding stillness, that's freedom. Mm -hmm. Freedom from the chattering mind. Mm -hmm. If I I don't find that freedom, then I'm stuck. Mm -hmm. It's like my own prison, man-made prison of my own making. 
Yeah. And it was, I would have to say that I feel like it's made by circumstances and oh, yeah. responses yeah. that we have to circumstances in our life, traumas and challenges. Yeah. But as we become conscious of it, yeah. we have a choice. Yeah. We can perpetuate the old thoughts mm-hmm. till we die if we want. Yeah. Yeah. Or we totally. can like take them on. And do do some MMA, mental martial arts, mm-hmm. on, those, totally. on those unproductive patterns and really try and um, shift. So shift before we close it up, what's your favorite MMA? Uh, I'll just, oh, man. <laughs> I mean, I do love the power breathing. Oh, okay. Because that, that's, a, that's a very effective way of me finding stillness. Um, I would say the simplest, the two simplest MMA techniques I use are just saying thank you in my mind. Mm, mm-hmm. I repeat it in my mind during good times, during bad times. First thing in the morning, I try and wake up and say thank you. Mm-hmm. It crushes like this whiny, whiny voice in my mind that used to dominate my mornings. Mm. You know, so I was saying thank you. And the other one, I've really been get, getting into just hearing the birds. Mm, hearing totally. the birds. And there's this Native American saying that if you're if you're outside and you don't hear the birds, that means you're not awake enough. Mm-hmm. You know, and interesting. Yeah, and when I really hone in to the birds, I really begin to hear these beautiful melodies. You know, and polyrhythms and just like exquisite musical, just beauty. Nice happening that I can completely ignore at times if my mind is chattering away. Mm-hmm. So just getting in touch with with the birds and. Another thing I've I've begun to realize, or question at least, I believe that if I hear the birds, perhaps the birds feel it. Mm, right. Yeah. It seems like it sometimes because I'm really listening and then a bird will come really close. And, mm-hmm. I think my favorite MMAs at this moment are putting my hand on my heart and my belly and breathing and just paying attention to what I feel and trying to feel the heat of my hands all the way into my spine. So mm. that's mm-hmm. that's the one I've been working with lately. So I just want to thank everybody for yes. listening to our show. This has been our August version 2023, yeah. moving into our human evolution. Mm-hmm. Um, we have... Tai Chi and Qigong classes that are open to everyone at the Commons in Baroqua yeah. on Saturdays at noon central time. And once a month, we hold a satsang. And just a little bit about what that is. Um, satsang is bringing a spiritual community together and sharing wisdom. We facilitate it, but we're not saying that we're the you know the voices to listen to what we do is we provide a topic to discuss and then everybody shares their wisdom together so yeah. that's how we do satsang with just a little bit of music at the beginning and end and that's the second sunday of each month at 11 a.m yeah and we're at also the commons active with uh, the wellness group in madison Oh, yeah. The next retreat, the wellness retreat in Madison is August 19th and 20th. And let me tell you, it is so fun. And yeah. um, conscious community. It's called the Wilderness Wellbeing Retreat by the Wisconsin Community Healing Collaborative in Madison. Hope to see you there. It's going to be a good time. Yeah, so that's also open to the public by yeah. donation. And um, I think that's the main well, things that we have. We're active on up. Insight Timer, mm-hmm. Heart Mind Center, mm-hmm. and YouTube Insight Timer. Yeah, so you can check and out Heart Mind Center. My bad. Yep. So you can see some past um, things that we've done. Yeah, or join us live on Insight Timer. Yep. Mondays and Wednesdays, 8.30 a.m. Yep. And that's that's also by donation. So we have a lot of things available at any price for you. And I would love to share some space with you and be able yeah. to hear your perspectives. So be in touch and see you soon. Yes. And we'll be back 
with our September edition on the first Sunday of the month. Till then, peace and love. Peace and love. Be well, y'all.